You know, industrial automation, of course, actuators, well, that's, that's the heart of the business. Now, pneumatics, of course, that's the tried and true way to move a cylinder, to get a piston, to get some linear motion, but it's not the only way. I'm with Tom Stables, he's branch manager, SMAC. Uh, Tom, if, if I'm a traditional automation guy and, and compressed air is my, my bread and butter, I know how to get linear motion. There is another way to do this. Yeah, yep, yeah, good, good, very good question. What, what we've done is we've taken the technology of, of voice coils and, and we're looking for opportunities when our customers need either um, longer life than what pneumatics can give them, uh, more controllability, um, or, or even maybe a quieter motion. And, and we've taken the, that technology and we've integrated it into an actuator. Um, this actuator can provide uh, speeds up to 100 Gs, forces up to 100 pounds, uh, and strokes up to about 10 inches a stroke. And, and by having voice coils in there, we have a very low moving mass, so that gives us the ability to get feedback live uh, of either force or speed or, or um, position and fully program that so no longer does your actuator necessarily go from full extract to full extend and, and bang itself up, beat itself up from air. Uh, now you can get an actuator where once you program it, can last for hundreds of millions, if not billions of cycles. Yeah, that's an interesting point because, of course, uh, those of us familiar with conventional technology is that most air cylinders have an internal stop. You don't want to rely on that. So you don't want to engineer external stops off and when you cycle it back and forth. And yeah, they can bang themselves to death. Correct. Yeah, that's very correct. So what we're able to do with this actuator, because it's fully programmable and because of its light moving masses, we can do a panted and soft land capability where we're at, we, we're, we travel at a fixed velocity while we keep an eye on the internal encoder. And as soon as we make contact with our part or the end of, of the motion, we notice that there's a stack up internally of the encoder error. And because our processor of our controllers are so quick, we can say, oh, wow, we've reached the end of stroke, we've reached the position of the, of the part that we want to check. And then we can, from that point, decide, what do we want to do now? Do we want to press with a certain force? Do we want to measure to make sure we're at the right position? Um, or do we want to eject at a certain velocity? And so to have that complete programmability and variability really makes it attractive option for pneumatic replacement. Now this is not a solenoid. Most of us are familiar with solenoid technology, but this is different. Yeah, well, you know, traditionally you think of a, a, a like a doorbell. If you're a kid and you're you know you're putting 12, 24 volts one way or the other way, you're getting a ding dong or or, or stereo speaker technology where the vo the coils doing the movement movement it's attached to a cone. We're doing we're doing that similarly in an actuator, but because we have the encoder built in there and 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 we're commutating this like a traditional servo motor, um, it's it's the same thing but only different, right? It's much more capabilities than than traditionally you'd expect out of a a doorbell, so, so to speak. Moving coil technology means reliability and high speeds, says Tom Stables of SMEC.